clear day, they said. It's raining now. To start this one with a little bit of a warning slash disclaimer. Um, in this video I'm out picking wild mushrooms. Um, now this should go without saying but if you're out doing the same sort of thing make sure you're 100% sure on the IDs and your mushrooms before you pick them because um, there are some really nasty mushrooms out there that will um, well write you off essentially. So get a book, make sure it's checked and be safe. Let's get on with the video. So, welcome back guys, welcome back to another one of me walking through the woods. Out today in uh, quite a large bit of wood actually. Um, it's very popular with uh, the locals because it's good for dog walking and such. Uh, situation near the village of Eartham. Um, it's also got uh, quite a historic uh, pathway that runs through the middle. I'll show you that a little bit later on. I'm going to be doing a bit of foraging. Uh, we've had lots of rain so everything's looking nice and green and hopefully we'll find a few bits we can have a look at. But I've not been here for quite a while so looking to get a little bit lost, find some new areas and um yeah just give it a go so let's go let's get away from the car park area because always typically it's always the busiest and the most well trodden sort of within the first sort of kilometer of the uh, car park so let's get out into the woods a bit and we'll um see if we can find something cool to have a look at and uh, I'll bring you along too. A little bit later on, I've got some uh, something to try that I haven't done before. So, you know how I like my coffee. So, this is a new way of brewing coffee that I've uh, been looking at and I've been eager to give it a go. So, I'm going to um, find a little spot later on and we'll uh, have a go at uh, brewing up a nice cup of coffee. So, stick around and uh, let's see how it goes. This is just so typical of this summer. <laughs> it's absolutely pissing down now. <laughs> you know, uh, nice clear day they said, but you never know, do you? Well, a bit of rain ain't gonna stop us, so. Howdy out. So, I'm going to get into a bit more of a covered area. It's a bit sparse out here, so. And then hopefully it'll be a little bit drier. Shouldn't last too long this rain. Passing showers. Oh well. We'll uh, battle on. Hell. British summer! British summer! Don't we love it? It's a British summer, don't you know? Are you enjoying it? <laughs> I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but it is absolutely chucking it down. Oh my god! Lovely. Let's get under this tree. Fuck oh, save no. What is this year? What is this all about? See if you can see these people. <laughs> 
one of these days, mate. One of these days. <laughs> oh well. I'm going to crash through the trees here a bit. Try and get undercover. That's safe. Out of the way. Out of the way. Come on. Here we go. Uh, the camera is absolutely misted a bit, so I can see that. <laughs> Free summer! So I was just um, cutting through the woods here and um, I was distracted by uh, a couple of small mushrooms and I was just having a look at and then I heard some movement behind me and there was three blokes <laughs> sort of combing through the woods and I had a I had a quick chat with them, and um, one of them was carrying a, uh, a sort of big carry bag. And I said, "Are you out yeah, foraging?" And he showed me in this bag, that, uh, and it was absolutely full of um, balit mushrooms. I asked him if I could film. He said he'd rather not because, yeah, okay, you know, people do get a bit, uh, what's it called, territorial on their mushroom patches. Um, but yeah, he said it's been an absolutely cracking year uh, for, for them. So, you know, there's, it gives me hope that obviously there's, uh, there's plenty of mushrooms out here, but also a little bit worrying that you've got guys absolutely combing the place dry. Now, here, we may well have okay. one that slipped the net, shall we say. Well, it's been absolutely munched, so it's certainly not one that I'm going to be taking. But slugs all over it. That's a lovely belite mushroom. Um, I know I've seen a picture. I've seen it in the book, so I will have to um, reference the book to uh, find out which one this is. But. It, pass, it, um, it fails the immediate belete rule of thumb that if it's got red on it or it stains blue when cut as you can see it's staining blue under here just where I've broken it and cut it through there um, then leave it alone but I know for a fact there are plenty of mushrooms in the belete family that do that and that are edible but I know, uh, but seeing that one in such bad state, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to go any further with it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, good to actually find something that I've been looking for. I'm getting quite hungry now, so I'm thinking of finding a little place to stop and um, cooking up. Well, I'm going to make this cup of coffee and. Um, also got a little sandwich to make up as well so let's find a find a nice little spot to sit and uh, we'll fire a stove up so i've just bought the wood gas stove for me today because um it's one of those that i don't need any tools um because it just uses twigs and there's absolutely loads of uh, deadfall around here yeah okay it's been raining it's going to be a bit damp but when this thing starts burning, it will, uh, yeah, it will really start chuffing. Standard procedure, just as you go to light it, it comes over dark and looks like it's going to start raining again. As you may know, uh, I have a bit of an ongoing feud with this uh, stove, so it's taking a little bit of time to get going, but 
Once it does go, I'm pretty sure it will be all right. I'm going to do this one-handed because I'm uh, holding the camera. So I'm going to want to put one, one cup for myself. One cup for the pot. Stay still. And then half a cup for good luck. So I just want that water to become warm. That's all it needs to be. It just needs to be warm. And while that is warming. Um, I'm going to grind my coffee in the hand grinder. I've got uh, two cups worth of beans in the bottom here. Put it, in it, put it in the top with the crank handle. Just grind it down. So as I said, I've got two um, two cups worth of uh, beans. this set to reasonably coarse, medium to coarse shall we say. Bit of a workout as well. It's getting there, it takes your time so it's getting there. Water is now the water is now warm. Much more sticks on the fire just to keep that going. So reasonably coarse ground coffee. Spider running across there. Reasonably coarse ground. That's going straight in the water. So it sits on the top of the water like that. And then I'm gonna get the uh, lid, put that on. I want that to start boiling. Hopefully, if we get some more fire, I can start boiling it. boiling it but the idea is that you bring that now up to the boil and when it starts boiling you boil it for about three minutes three to four minutes take it off the boil um, and let it set uh, let sorry let it settle now that goes against nearly everything that you get told about coffee and that you shouldn't add it to boiling water or you shouldn't use boiling water to brew coffee because uh, it burns the coffee Apparently that's complete bollocks. Um, this is the way the old frontier men used to do it. So I'm out to give it a go. Yeah. What can possibly go wrong? The idea is that you boil the coffee um, and it removes the, um, I don't know what chemical it is, but the, um, basically the acidity. So it, it kills off that bitterness but um, you can make it stronger by boiling it for longer so I'm going to do it for sort of three minutes just to try it first time ever doing it I don't want to do it for like five minutes and it be absolutely inedible or inedible undrinkable whatever the term is so while I'm waiting for that coffee to cool down and settle which looks really nice actually looks good stoke the fire back up 
Put some oil in the pan. Just cook cooks the bacon up. Try that through. Grease in there. Right, so now the coffee will start to cool. So, we need to get a little bit more water. So remember I said half for good luck? Well, we actually need another half a cup. Right. And that's it. Now we put just under half a cup in there. And that cold water suppresses all the coffee beans, uh, coffee beans to the bottom. So now, we don't need luck. Just need luck like that. Wood's cooking, flambe, kind of. So now, hopefully, all those coffee grounds have sunk to the bottom, and we're going to get ourselves a nice smooth cup of coffee. Certainly looks like a nice cup of coffee. A couple of slices of bacon in there with a bit of forest floor for good measure and of course a dash of the only sauce you ever need, Tabasco. Get that in there. Toasted bread. Smash, smash, smash. Mm. And a cup of campfire coffee. Let's try the campfire coffee for the first time. That's a damn fine cup of coffee. Comment down below if you know where that's from. In all honesty though, that is a very fine cup of coffee. It's got... It's actually so much smoother than even like my usual mocha pot style coffee that I use, that I cook when I bushcraft. Mm. That's a winner. Them old cowboys knew what they were doing, didn't they? So I think I found my first big mushroom of what I'm looking for. But before I show you it, there's a couple of others that are here. Now this has already been like this. Now that's been cut. And someone's cut that because it's full of magnets. So it's definitely been, you know, this bit here as well. That's just old and knackered. So it's definitely been foraged because that's been cut through to see if there's any maggots in the in the stem. But this is the job that I'm now interested in. I'm gonna cut the base. maggots perfectly clean so I'm going to take that 
all those leaves off. I'm going to have that. Absolute beauty. First one. First good one, anyway. You can see there's another little one over there. But that just shows that there is obviously people combing these woods for mushrooms. So. I think we got very lucky to find that one anyway. It was probably left because it was tiny and now it's got a lot bigger. So, oh well, brilliant find. So this is definitely the biggest one I've found today. Um, it's a shame the um, stem is totally rotten through so I'm not going to take it but look at the absolute size of it that's my hand it's way bigger than my hand and I don't know if you can really see it under there there's a big slug on the uh, stem but yeah there's a that would have had a really fat stem on it but it's been eaten away all in here but I've obviously stumbled across somewhere that hasn't been scoured because there's there's loads of them all dotted all over the place so he obviously gave me the slip as any forager would by saying oh go down the hill don't go up the hill of course up the hill is where I found them all but again it's one of those it's further away from the car park it's been knocked over it's just been not been knocked over it's just been eaten through but I'm starting to find loads. I'm not going to start. I'm not going to take them all because I've got two nice ones. The first two nice ones that I found. So yeah, leave them for other foragers. Leave them for the woods. You know that's the fucking hell. This one has got a stem on it and all. A little bit stunted from probably that stick that's been on it, but absolutely loads of them, which is good to see. I like the fact that, well, I know where they are now. But anyway, <laughs> keep waffling on about bloody mushrooms and all sorts, so I've got to uh, get to this path. <laughs> but once you start finding nice stuff, you can't stop. We all know that feeling. Running out of space. <laughs> Running out of video. Stop waffling, Robin. Get on with it. Sure thing. So, this path looks like any old other path, doesn't it? But this is actually an ancient Roman highway. Um, this is Stain Street, uh, the old Roman road that runs, well, it was the highway to London. It starts in Chichester, uh, where there was a palace at Fishbourne. It cuts up over the Sussex Downs to Bigner, where there was another palace. And then from Bigner, it cuts in almost a straight line all the way to London. You can follow it all the way to London and you can still see it on the map today. If you, if you zoom out on a map you can still see the roads that make up Stain Street today. Um, if you see anything travelling from around Chichester direction northeast to London that's Stain Street and this footpath that runs all the way through these woods is that street and if I carried on up over the hill here there's two big uh, mobile antennas at the top and that's Bigner Hill and as I say there's a palace or what's left of a palace on the other side in Bigner village interesting route to have right on my doorstep
unfortunately I'm running really low on ba uh, battery on the camera as well as memory space so I'm going to pick this up back at home where we can talk a little bit about the mushrooms that I found and um, sign this thing off properly thanks for watching guys see you in a sec boy so back home now um, got the uh, bag of the mushrooms that we picked um, I'm going to show you them and um, we're going to process them down because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to dry these so these have been, been out of the ground now for uh, about 24 hours so as you can see those pores will start to turn even more yellow So the main uh, danger signs with this Belit family of mushrooms is that there's no red anywhere on the stem or under the cap, as well as if it's cut, the the skin, uh, not skin, the uh, flesh doesn't stain blue like that one that did that when we were out in the woods. I have since looked that one up, and I believe it to be the lurid Belit. Um, the reason it is in the book that I had, but it doesn't show that blue staining quite as well as it does on their website. So I'll show you the book that I use in a short bit, but let's just get into this one and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to these. So just to make 100% sure on our uh, ID feature, I'm going to cut this little one here straight in half. So what would happen on a potentially... Uh, dangerous one of these is that it would stain blue when it oxidizes with the air now as you can see that flesh has stayed lovely and white so there's absolutely no worry with that at all um, these want to be sort of processed and worked on as soon as possible really it's been it's the next day after i was in the woods so you know Unfortunately, I've had to leave it, but I'm getting to it now. But those are some very nice mushrooms that I'm going to process and I'm going to dry them out. So by, so by drying it, what we can do is basically make the mushrooms last a lot longer and we can use them in stocks and stuff to make that really sort of nice umami flavor and give sauces and stuff a bit of an almost meaty kick um, rather than just throwing cubes of mushroom into dishes but this one was a great one to find there's no um, sign of any uh, bug infestation or anything in these so i'm good to go with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that cap off uh, take that stem off I'm going to remove the pores just because the, the pores hold a lot of moisture so and they do sort of tend to go a bit um, what's it called um, a bit chewy I know I'm going to be powdering these down but I might try drying them separately there we go. these ones with age have started to detach anyway so now down to the big bits with the uh, that big piece of stem I have noticed there's a few bugs starting to make their presence known but that's fine by me all is welcome try and keep them about the same sort of size and then I can lay those out on a baking tray in the oven on a very low temperature sort of about 60 degrees dry them out for a couple of hours and then they'll be really good to good to process and same with this
so there we have it a load of nice uh, prepared um, belief mushrooms ready to go in the oven on a really low temperature just to dry them out dehydrate them and then I can powder them down in the food processor and they'll last for ages um, and I can add it to um, stock and stuff and it will make a really nice sort of umami uh, and a quite sort of meaty um, stock out of the powder that we'll get out of these mushrooms. These will shrivel to almost next to nothing. You know, it looks like a lot now, but it does shrink to next to nothing. For reference, this is the guide that I tend to use. It's the uh, Wild Food UK uh, pocket guide. Uh, it hasn't got everything in it. Check the website if there's something that you can't find. Um, it's a great book um, and of course as ever no sponsorship I bought this uh, but it's got sections on um, uh, plants it's got sections on uh, trees and it's got sections on mushrooms so it really does cover the bases so with all that being said thank you very much for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one bye